Now, the mystery of the seven cows. Now, you brought, the, you brought the information of a cow. Actually, let me, this is something I've never shared. Let me, okay. the, 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 even before this, and only Jerry Jones and, and Tammy would bear witness of this, um, we were talking, we were kind of joking for, for about a year in the car about the seventh cow before it existed. It's only, that only happens at Morningside. I don't know, it happened in, on the way to the airport. Uh, so we have emails back and forth about the seventh cow, didn't exist. Then, and I have one, actually have a, an email a few days I sent to you before the first appearance of this, the first cow. So what happened is that, that on, on this day in autumn, suddenly the Associated Press, not Christian, not, not prophecy, they send forth an image to America, and the image is of the cow with the number seven on its head. That's the image that goes through the world. Now, just to set it up for those who don't the, the biblical, the biblical basis of this is this, that when God warned Egypt of the coming of seven years of famine, the changing of seven, seven again, Shemitah, seven years of abundance to seven years of famine, it's the Pharaoh who has the dream, and the dream is of the seven cows, and another cows. seven cows. And he sees them, and, that, and those cows, each cow represents a year. The first seven represents years of prosperity. The second seven, the sickly, or in Hebrew, the evil cows, represent the years of famine. So every cow, this is the bi first biblical symbol given in the Bible of the warning of economic famine, collapse, is that of a cow. Every cow represents a year. And so the key turning point is the cow number seven. That's the last year. Not only that, that would represent the Shemitah, because it's the seventh year it represents, but, it's the la but it also rep represents the turning point of from a prosperity to famine. Okay, so you've got that all there. And then, so, so what happens? Now the Associated Press sends this image to America of cow number seven, the biblical imagery that God warned Egypt about, now coming to America. And what date is it released to America? It's released on September 25th, the opening day of the seventh year, the very opening day of the Shemitah. The wow. symbol... <laughs> The biblical symbol of the seventh year comes out on the opening day of the seventh year of this cow that they, they put, these, the secular press put it on the airwaves because they said this is so weird to have a cow born with the number seven. It was just born a few days before. By the way, its name was Benjamin. They called it Ben or Benjamin, which is actually linked to Joseph, Benjamin. You know. um, oh. And so, so this goes out. Now, I shared this last time I was here. So the last time I was here. So, so you've got that. Now, it was announced, though, on the, on the first day of September the... September 25th is the day the image went out. The, the opening Shemitah. day of the Shemitah, the, which was exactly half a year from this this. This convergence but of all these it's things. It's like the, the trumpet sounds on that day. The, the warning goes out. Do you understand this at all? What's the odds of this, people? Yeah. On the first day of the Shemitah year, the warning goes out of a cow with a seven. And what did the world interpret it as? They just thought, hey, this is a, hey, it's, this is a real weird thing, and it's a, it's a sign that maybe it's, they, I don't know, they linked it to the Pittsburgh Steel or something yes, very they crazy, did. something like that. They yeah. thought it was a sign that the, <laughs> they were going to win the Super Bowl. Yeah, that's how they... So they named the cow after a football player. Right. Yeah. That is a picture of America. Wow. <laughs> we turn it all to pleasure and sports and fun or whatever. And just like missing the Harbingers, missing another sign right here. Yeah. I mean, and so, first of all, for a cow to have a number seven to begin with, that's something, with, that, that's beyond. But then to have it on the day that the cow represents the seventh oh. year. So you have, and that's not, it's the Shemitah. So here it goes out on that day. Now I come here, and this is all part of God's, I believe, working. I'm sharing it with you here, last time. And then it turns out, and I, I only know this because I watched the show. So <laughs> it turns out to... Farmers from Texas. Yes. Um, Hep and Pam. Is Hep that it? And, Pam, that's and right. they happened to, from what you happened to turn on the Jim Baker show right. within 20 seconds of me sharing this. Happened this is the man. Yeah. But Hep, you walk into your house. You just came home from doing shopping or something. You've been out. You walk in the house. And so he's, but he turns his TV on. If he would have been a few minutes later, he would have missed it. 
right it was right at, at the, the end yeah. of where you were on talking yeah. about it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And so he said, yeah. well, we have a cow like that. We have a calf that was just born. And then he looked. Yeah, and then you, what I, what I saw here is that you looked at your records and you actually put the timing of the birth of the cow. And when you looked at the timing of the cow, it was born on September 25th, the same opening day of the Shemitah, the opening of the seventh year, same day. Not only is it enough to have a cow with the number seven, now there are two cows with the number seven, and both the same exact day. No one won. Do you know not one? I read all the newspapers, clippings. I read everything about it. And all they thought it was a sign maybe that the Pittsburgh Steelers were going to win the Super Bowl. And no one had any spiritual inkling except they said, oh, it's weird. You know, like seven is weird, you know. And then God gives a born-again calf, I guess. <laughs> because, well, at least the, the farmers are born-again people. Okay. They're our partners. They watch this show. Even that is the hand of God. Yeah. That it happened to be someone who's watching and yes. part of the ministry, and right. that's where it was shared. That's right. God did it so we wouldn't miss these things. That's what just do like you think, home. Rabbi? Do you, what do you well, think God's saying through it, this? Well, it, well, I wanted is, to ask you. This is yeah. my first chance. <laughs> one is, I mean, one is the Bible speaks in, in the matters of judgment, there have to be two witnesses. Mm. Before the matter of judgment can be passed, there are two witnesses. Here there are two cows with the number seven confirming the second confirming confirmation to witnesses of this, of this phenomenon. That's the first thing. Uh, secondly, it's interesting because there are different types of cows. I mean, when one was male and one is female, one is a red heifer, I mean, on top of everything, red <laughs> heifer, which is, you know. That's a spiritual cow, right? Yeah. But, I mean, but, that's, that's a biblical. But, yeah, but notice something. In, in the, it's kind of completes it all because in the, in the warning that was given to Egypt through the dream of Pharaoh, it wasn't just seven cows. It was 14 cows. It was two sets of seven. Two sets of two cows who are the seventh cow. Now it's 14. You understand? You, you just, put, just add, the, just add yeah. what's on the cow yeah. and you have 14. That is the final number of Pharaoh's dream and split in half by seven and seven. That's Pharaoh's dream. That's the same. It's like matching the same imagery. Fourteen, two seventh cows, each cow representing the set. One, and notice something else. The cows of Pharaoh's dream are representing, it's one type of cow, is the, se the seventh cow of one type, and mm -hmm. then there's another, a different type of cow that yes. is the other seven. Mm -hmm. So there are two seventh cows, each representing the seven. So it's, the exa it's matching it exactly in all the, all the components of that warning to Egypt are now complete with the seven and seven, two cows. And, and now notice something else. You know, if you look at that first cow, you look at that seven, that seven, it looks like a, almost a typewriter seven. It mm -hmm. looks like a, it's got a serif. It looks like a, it's like a mm -hmm. fancy seven. Yeah. Yeah. Time Romans. Now, re now remember, mm -hmm. with the two cows, there were two different kinds. The first was a, representing abundance. The second represents the famine. So mm -hmm. two different kinds. The second seven of this one doesn't look fancy. It looks almost like a Passover seven. Like you just, you dab this, you dabbed it on the, on, as like Passover. It, it's sparse. You know, you, know, you have, so you, with, with, with Pharaoh, there's no frills on that one. The first one, it looks like this very fancy typewriter here. So you have two types of cows, just as like you did with the two types of seven. With Pharaoh, you had one representing prosperity, fanciness, and the other representing judgment. Mm. Oh, oh or the warning of what's coming. Oh. And the seventh cow represents the turning from a, abundance to judgment or wow. famine. Wow. And while you all are here, the uh, equinox is split totally in half. It's it, it just what you're saying about the two seven. Splitting sevens. of the Shemitah right now. We're talking about, yeah, yeah, and notice that the other thing I thought here is then why, what are the chances of that all this and then it's a red heifer, which the Bible speaks about. Red heifer was a sacrifice, but it was about cleansing, cleansing through, through kind of fire, through judgment. Could it be, I mean, could it be that through what is coming, 
God is seeking to bring a cleansing, a purging, and a revival among those who will turn to God. And Amen. I'm us, believing Red for that. Not redemption. The judgment. Red heifer has the has the theme of judgment because it's ashes, but also re redemption, redemption yeah. in it, yeah. revival. Yeah. Good. September 25th, which is the opening day of the Shemitah, yes. was also the new year. It was also the civil new year, Tishri 1. It's the beginning of, of Tishri. You know, it's yes. the opening of the civil year. Yes. So that was the new year. Well, then we had our new year, I mean the January 1st, and we had a celebration at Beth Israel, and I came home and I got an email from you. It was the very stroke of midnight, and I, got, I found out about the other calf born. That's how I heard about it. Mm -hmm. I feel this, this is a ceiling, the confirmation and the, and the two witnesses as that's part of the same principle. Notice, remember with, with Isaiah 9.10, it wasn't just one person who said it, Tom Daschle, who pronounces it. Then he has John Edwards yes. say the exact same thing. Or then, and then Obama even. So not that they know it. So he does, he confirms his, he confirms his word. I, it's like a ceiling. And then, but with this one, what's it, you know, it's on the, not only it's the exact symbolism that God gave to Egypt to warn them of this very thing. How many years ago was the first warning? The, so this is, yeah, almost 4,000 years ago when that happened to Egypt. And again, concern, And God's using the cow again. The same sign, same symbol, same thing. And not only is it one, but it was two. That means it's the exact matching of Pharaoh's dream. Uh, you know, it's two sets of seven, you know. And, and it said judgments it, it was Tragedy's a war, it was a coming. warning saying get ready you know that you're going from you're going from abundance to to famine in the land and that that's what the turning point was and you know i thought about something else and i'm not saying that we know all these things but interesting 14 years it comes out to you know two cows of seven that was a 14 year period but it's actually we're coming to the 14 year period since all this began since 9/11 began we're coming now to the 14th year which also goes with the cows. And that 14th year will be September of 2015, which will be the last day that the stock markets open, will be 9-11, September 11, uh -huh. going into the wipeout at Lule 29 day. It'll be frozen at 9-11. Whatever 9-11 is, that's going to be frozen into this Elul 29. That will be the 14th anniversary, two sevens, 14th anniversary of 9-11 since the Harbingers began. I believe the 9-11 was the great warning to our country. And you the believe first that because that's first, what the, the harbor first shaking. Built around. Same, same pattern of Israel. The but they shaking. didn't listen. We've gotten much worse. Have we listened? America has grown so... Think about where we were then and where we are now. It's gotten think, yeah, worse. People listen as I look at you over here. Think of what's happened in 14 years in America. Remember everybody flocking to churches after 9-11 saying God bless America and remember that what looked like could have been a revival lasted for three weeks. No revival, no repentance, no revival, no changing of course. So what's happened? We've not only stayed where we, we didn't just stay where we were. We didn't just not come back to God. We've got grown so much farther from God now. Yeah. And it's accelerating. And that's why I believe the signs are accelerating. Mm -hmm. We are rapidly heading. You know, there, there was, I, I mentioned um, that the man who had the dream of the, the tower going up. The, he had he had nine. He saw nine eleven. Then he saw this tower going up, which was the the, the new tower. And he, he, as it went up, as it went up, he he saw America descending, descending. That's when he heard the voice saying, "This tower shall be is a seal and a sign of my judgment against this nation." We are rapidly heading, and this year of the Shemitah is most likely going to witness the ending of marriage, the definition of marriage as we know it, as the Supreme Court is is set to decide that in June of the year of the Shemitah. I believe without America, America is really in deep trouble, people. I believe we should prepare. I believe we ought to be ready, don't you? Yeah, the Bible says a wise man sees calamity coming and prepares. The most of the first preparation, most important preparation for anyone is get right with God. That's the yes. first thing. If, if, you're not, if you're not born again, get born again. That's the safest place to be is inside Jesus. Safest place on earth. And if you are born again, get your life in him. If there are things that shouldn't be there, get it in now. Yes. That's the thing. Then, then, then be wise with everything else. Be wise. You know, be wise. The Bible does. We're talking about, here's the interesting thing. You're talking about 
Joseph, Joseph was the one, the key preparer in the Bible. I mean, he's the prepper. You know, yeah. he's the one who prepared. Right. And, but it's interesting because the same sign of Joseph, who was the first pre preparer, yeah. has been now come to America, which is the cows, the seven and the cows. Same thing. That was wow. about preparing. Wow. wow.